I would like to go over some very important concepts concerning page layout. And I am using the CSS float, clear, and overflow properties in this demonstration as they are used in page layout. So if we look at the float property, what it does, it specifies how an element is taken from the normal flow. So normally, as the HTML is read on the web page, the browser executes it in that order, meaning block level elements take up the entire width of their container unless there is a width on that element. However, they would stack one on top of each other. They would not be sitting side by side. So the float property allows you to specify how an element can be taken out of the normal flow and placed along the right or left side of its container. And therefore, content will come up and wrap alongside it. So the float property can take a left, right, none, or inherit value. Inherit is a value, meaning it will inherit that value from the parent. None, because there are times when you might want to stop the wrapping or the floating, and this is where you would be doing that on a mobile device. On the desktop, content is usually placed on the left or right, and then what is underneath it will wrap. So here we see on the left screen, we have a picture and we have some text underneath it. Now bear in mind that picture has a fixed width. Even if it's not coded into our HTML code, it still has a width. And if we were to set a float property to left on that picture, as demonstrated in the code below, you will notice that the content will continue wrapping until there's no more room. And it, it will fill up the remaining space because there is no constraint of width on that paragraph of text. However, if that paragraph of text wasn't as large, what would happen is everything underneath would start wrapping up also. And that is an effect we might not want. So most of the time when you set a float, you also need to clear that float in order to stop the wrapping. So I will demonstrate how to do that. There are two main ways of doing that. The first way is using the clear property. This is a CSS property and it specifies where the floating will stop essentially. So if the float is set on the left, the clear would be set on the left. If the float was set on the right, the clear would be set on the right. In the industry, we have this term called the clear fix. It's not part of the CSS syntax, it's been coined by developers, so to speak. And what we would normally be doing in traditional HTML is we would be inserting an element after that div and sending the clear property to left in that element. Now that is not semantically correct with HTML5 because we, we would be using that empty element for page layout. So what we're doing, we're using the after pseudo element and actually creating some invisible content after that div, setting it to block, and setting the clear property to left. So this is what is called the clear fix, where we can actually create content using CSS, so therefore it is really not part of the HTML page, it's part of the presentation, and that is one commonly used way to clear a float. We also can use the overflow property. Now the overflow property has some other applications also. So the overflow property specifies what will happen if the content overflows an element's box. So if you remember from the box model, when we add content to an element, there is an edge. And if you put a border on it, you will see the edge of the content. Normally the container stretches to accommodate the content. So this overflow property will only exist if the container is constrained in some way, meaning we have imposed a width or a height on it so that the content will spill out. So if you look at these four examples here, setting the overflow to visible means that you see what is spilling out of the box. 
Setting it to hidden means you hide what is spilling out of the box. Setting it to scroll means you automatically have a horizontal and vertical scroll bar so that you can see everything that is spilling out of the box. Setting it to auto, which is used to clear floats, means that if it needs a scroll bar, it will put it there. And so what that does, it forces that container to essentially stretch to keep everything in that box and therefore the elements underneath can no longer wrap into it. So rather than setting up a class for clear fix, we can set up a class for overflow. And remember, this only works if the content is enclosed in a parent container. The same thing with the clear fix. The HTML has to be in the right relationship to the information also. So what that does, it, it forces everything to stay in that box and says that nothing else can come up inside that box. All right, supposing we wanted to work with two or more fixed with containers. And this is very commonly done in web page layout where, where we have several containers floating across. So here we have two containers with fixed width. And in order to have them both float, we need to set a float on each of them. Once you have more than two, using floats on all of them works well, as you have seen in navigation. So you could use two left floats, or you could use a left float and a right float, which is what I have done in this example. And therefore, because we have everything inside our section, we can use the clear fix property. The only difference is because we have a float on the right and the left, we would use the both value. We would say clear both in order to clear both floats. So these are some very common situations where we are laying out our content and utilizing these very important float, clear, and overflow CSS properties.